So here we've got a truss that looks like it should be real simple to analyze. I mean, we've got three beams and a single load. The catch is, this truss tends to create all sorts of problems for people when they're first learning how to go through and analyze trusses. And the reason is, these supports are on the side of the truss. And that means we have to look at this truss in a way that's a little bit different from how you may have looked at other trusses before. You see, we're going to analyze this truss just like any other. First, we're going to find the reaction forces, then we're going to solve for the force in each beam, and then we're going to determine whether each beam is under tension or compression. But the pain in all this comes from solving for the reaction forces that are holding the darn thing up. Now, let me explain. You see, here we have a roller. And a roller is really just like a, a wheel. It's able to allow the motion of, in this case, a truss in one axis. Now, this roller is, is squished between the truss and some sort of wall so that the roller is free to move vertically. The only thing the roller does to the truss is act horizontally on this joint B right here, meaning it can either pull to the left or push to the right. Now, this pin up here works a little bit differently. Think of the pin like a hinge. See, the pin allows this entire truss to rotate around joint A. Or you could say that this pin is free to act in any direction on joint A, it just can't provide any torque on the truss at joint A. Now to solve for these reaction forces at each of the supports, we're going to approach this problem just like we normally do, by looking at the sum of all torques around a particular joint. Now in this case, there's two places that we can start. We can either start by looking at the torque around the roller or the torque around the pin. And if you think of these two supports in terms of unknowns, around the pin we have all sorts of unknown forces. I mean, the force by this pin could literally be in any direction. The force by the roller can only act horizontally, which means we're going to solve for the force by the roller first. Now to do that, and this seems a little bit counterintuitive, we're going to look at the sum of all torques around the pin. You see, by looking at the sum of all torques around the pin, we isolate all these unknown forces so that our only unknowns are the forces by the roller. Now, in all statics problems, the sum of all torques around any point is zero. And on this truss, there are two forces which are producing torque around the pin. The first being the load. Now, that load is acting at a radius of 10. And it's acting downward with a force of 1. I made the forces easy. It's a Monday. And the angle between this load, which is straight downward, and the beam itself is 90 degrees. So the sine of 90 is 1. And this load is producing a torque around the pin that's trying to make the whole truss rotate clockwise. So we're going to say that's a positive torque. Now something has to be fighting this clockwise torque by the load. And that's where our force by the roller comes in. You see, if the load's trying to make the entire truss rotate clockwise around A, then the reaction force by the roller is going to be trying to make the entire truss rotate counterclockwise. So I'm going to say in the negative direction, we're going to have some torque by the roller. Now this force by the roller is acting at a radius or a distance of 5 away from A. So radius is 5. And our force by the roller, I'm just going to call that force by the roller. It's a very clever name. And that force by the roller is acting horizontally, or really at a right angle, to this radius vector, or beam AB, which is extending straight down. And again, sine of 90 is still 1. So we've got a clockwise torque, and then over here, we have our counterclockwise torque. And in solving for the force by the roller, we find the roller is acting with a force of 2. And this brings up an issue. You see, when we go from talking about torques to talking about linear forces, a lot of times people's heads fall off and they forget what direction may be associated with a particular sign on a number. Now, there's all sorts of tricks that go with this, but what I typically tell people to do is just stop and apply a bit of logic. I mean, think about it. If the downward force by the load is trying to make this entire truss rotate clockwise, and the force by the roller is trying to make the entire truss rotate counterclockwise, looking down here, that means the force by the roller has to be pushing to the right, meaning our force by the roller is to the right. And you'll see why that's so important in just a minute here. So now that we know the force by the roller, let's turn our attention to the pin. Now we can do a similar, now we can take a similar approach in looking around the roller, but I'll tell you right now, there's an issue in this. See, watch what happens. Looking first at the load, which is producing a clockwise torque around B. The load is acting at the end of this beam BC, which is a distance of 11.18 away from B. 
and that load's acting straight down with a force of 1. And having already done the math on this truss, this angle right here is 26.6, which means the angle between the load and the beam is 90 minus 26.6, which is 63.4. So going back to our torque equation over here, we're going to have RF sine of the angle between the load and the beam. That's 63.4. Now some of you may recognize there's a little trick in this called the effective moment arm that would save us from solving for the length of this beam as well as this angle, but I'm going to save that discussion for another day. Here's the issue. We've got this clockwise torque by the load and this counterclockwise torque around B by the pin. Watch what happens. We know the pin is acting at a distance of 5 away from B, and we've got some unknown force by the pin. Nothing strange so far. The issue is in the direction of that force by the pin. I mean, this force could be in literally any direction. So we don't know what angle to put in here. And what this leaves us with is a real big problem. We're trying to solve a single equation for two unknowns. We don't know the force by the pin or the angle, which means this isn't going to get us very far. So what we need to do is stop looking at torque to solve for this reaction force, and instead, we're going to look at the sum of all forces in each axis acting on the entire truss. You see, we know the sum of all forces on the entire truss in the horizontal axis needs to add up to zero. Well, there's really only three forces acting on this truss, the load, the force by the roller, and the force by the pin. Now, our load's acting straight down. It's not acting horizontally at all. But the roller over here is pushing with a force we already found of 2 to the right. The only other force is the force by the pin. The only other force in the x-axis is the horizontal force by the pin. Now, solving for that force by the pin, we find the pin has a horizontal component of 2 to the left. And we can do a similar thing by looking at the truss vertically. There's one newton of force downward by the load. I'm going to say that's negative 1. I'm calling it negative because it's downward plus the force by the pin in the y-axis, which we're trying to solve for, plus the force by the roller vertically. But remember, our roller provides no vertical force. It's free to, wait for it, roll vertically. So solving for the force by the pin in the y-axis, we find the pin has to be acting upward with a force of 1. So now that we have the two components of our force at the pin, we can solve for the total force by the pin, just using the Pythagorean theorem. We've got our horizontal component plus our vertical component. And putting those together, we find the force by the pin is 2.23. And like I said, finding the reaction forces is the hard part of this problem. Now that we know these reaction forces, the rest of this truss is actually a breeze. So let's start by applying the method of joints right here at A. We know the sum of all forces on this joint horizontally is zero. Now the pin's pulling in the horizontal axis to the left with a force of 2. That means AB and AC have to have a total pull to the right of 2 on this joint. The catch being AB can't act horizontally on joint A because it's a vertical beam, and beams only act along their axis. That means AC has a horizontal force to the right of 2 right here at joint A. And looking vertically at A, we see the pin's pulling up with a force of 1, which means AB has to be pulling down with a force of 1. It's the only other element in this truss that can act vertically on that joint. So now we know the force in two of these beams. Let's turn to the third beam. You can do this by looking at either end. I'm going to look over here. You see, if AC is pulling to the right on one side of the beam, it's going to have to be pulling to the left with the same force on the other end of the beam. But since this joint isn't moving horizontally, that means this beam BC is going to have to be pushing to the left with the same force as AC is pulling to the right. And since this joint isn't moving vertically, that means this beam BC is going to have to be pushing up just as hard as the load is pulling downward on C. So knowing both the horizontal and vertical components of force in BC, we can again apply the Pythagorean theorem and find the force in BC is 2.24. Now you'll notice these are both the exact same equation, and I rounded it in a little bit different. I'm going to call that 2.23, just so the internet doesn't light up the comments with my incompetence here. So now we know the forces in all three of the beams. 
which means all we need to do is figure out whether each beam is under tension and compression. So looking at AC, you'll notice AC is acting inward on the two ends of the beam, or really it's pulling these two joints, A and C, together, which means AC is under tension. And AB is doing a similar thing, it's acting inward, meaning it too is under tension. And last there's BC. Now BC is pushing the joint C up and to the right here, and B down and to the left over here. And anytime a beam is pushing on its ends, that means it's under compression. So there it is, the analysis of this truss that tends to give people all sorts of trouble in solving for the reaction forces. So I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.